YouTube. Today in the Naughty Librarian, I'm going over the best books I read in 2018. I think overall 2018 was like an excellent reading year. Very good choices. I didn't want to just have this be like all of the books I read. <laughs> so I have narrowed it down to my top 10 books. Now these top 10 were picked because these are books that like I just keep thinking about long after I've read them. I think about certain scenes in it and I'm like, oh, that was so good. So these are books with like lasting power in my brain that I keep thinking about constantly. There's a lot of good books, but these are the ones that like I keep coming back to. Let's start things off right with The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare. Holy macaroni. This is one of the first historical romances I ever read and like knocked it out of the park because I never read historical romances before this year. And then I found Tessa Dare like immediately and then read all of her books. <laughs> Mainly because the Duchess deal was so freaking good. It's so good. This is about Ash and Emma. Ash is the Duke of Ashbury and he is a curmudgeon -y guy. He is a war hero. He is kind of blinded in one eye and like has scars and stuff because of a, like a rocket accident in a war. And then you have Emma, who is a plucky seamstress, and he's just like, shit, I need a wife. And she knocks on his door, she's like, hey, you need to pay me for this. And he's like, done, you wanna be my wife? <laughs> so it's kind of an odd meet cute. But um, I really enjoyed their relationship. And honestly, reading this book changed like my viewpoint towards historical romance. And I found a brand new author that I absolutely love. So totally top 10, it's amazing. Another romantic pick is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Hong. It's so delightful. It is a delightful novel. It is a gender swap pretty woman, and it is about a woman who has autism, and she is trying to figure out sex and relationships, so she hires a male escort. And the relationship with each other is wonderful. It warms your heart. It steams up the pages. It does lots of things and all of them are good. I highly recommend. It is pretty hyped. I think it did win like on some lists best romance of the year. So obviously I am not alone in my opinion that it is excellent and it's so well written and it's so fun. I appreciate that it is on voices and it's just great and I can't wait to read more books by Helen Hong. I know she has another book coming out next year that is following characters that you met in The Kiss Quotient. So I'm, I'm so down, I'm so excited. So those are pretty much it for like comedies. <laughs> I only had like two comedies that made my top 10 list. The rest of the books are kind of dark, kind of spooky actually. I read a lot of like kind of spooky books this year surprisingly. So let's get into all those. Surprise of all surprises, I fell in love with the villain series by V.E. Schwab. And this is book one, it's called Vicious, the sequel is called Vengeful. It blew my mind with how good it was, because like, me and V.E. Schwab, we don't always see eye to eye, and it's nothing against her writing, because I think she's a genius and an incredible writer, it's just she does have a tendency to be like overly wordy at times, and I wasn't feeling it for a lot of her other books. Like I like them, but they weren't like my favorites. And then I read Vicious, and I was like, is this the same author? Like, it is freaking amazing. The series is about a lot of things, about morally gray people getting superpowers, essentially. And when you have morally gray people with a lot of superpowers, what happens? And the answer is probably nothing good because they're kind of shitty people. <laughs> so it's kind of um, a story all about villains. And they're very nuanced, interesting characters. These are so dark and juicy, and it's all character study. So a lot of people who really, really like V.E. Schwab for her work adventure-wise, like they like her plots and like action and stuff, they might not feel like this is the book for them, but me, I'm like into character study and I wanna get into their juicy little thoughts and I'm like, oh, I love being inside of a character's brain. So this is like all brain all the time. <laughs> so if you're into that, I recommend this highly and its sequel is very good, but I think I like Vicious better than the sequel. Like, just a touch more. Next up, I picked The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. I think this is the one I think about maybe the least out of all the other books on the list, but you know what? I really enjoy it still. 
I thought this was an incredible debut. Like, I was shocked this was a debut. It was so gosh darn good. Holy macaroni. Like, this is not a, this is not a debut author. This is very strong and interesting and weird. And it doesn't make sense always, but that's kind of the point. And I appreciated it just from, like, the art of storytelling and how she did it. Oh, so good. <laughs> It's about this girl named Alice, and she has grown up hearing these stories that her grandma wrote. Her grandma basically wrote a collection of fairy tales, and they're all weird fucked up fairy tales where like a bunch of horrible things happen, and then they just kind of end. Like there's not really a moral to the story. There's not always a happy ending. They're just fucked up stories, and they're wildly popular. As you go on through the story, you start realizing that the tales of the hinterland, which is the name of the book, those tales are true. These are real people. These are real characters. And they exist. And Alice, um, her mom is kidnapped and she's going to find her. And she realizes she was taken to the Hazelwood, which is her grandmother's property that she's always been warned to never go to. So it is a really weird exploration of fairy tales. And it's also, um, I like that the characters aren't necessarily likable. They're um, dynamic. Alice isn't the nicest person by a long shot. She's actually, she does a lot of things that are unlikable, but like you still want to, you still like her anyway. She's very fascinating to read about. And overall, I kind of just liked it for the sake of the storytelling. It's, it's hard to explain what it's about without spoilers, but essentially it's kind of similar to the fairy tales that her grandmother told where like a lot of weird messed up stuff happens and characters do things and then it just kind of ends <laughs> like, and that's kind of how it happens here which i could see why some people wouldn't like that but like i like that it just kind of ends like there's no moral to the story here it just sort of ends and i'm like oh that's that is smart storytelling i, I enjoyed it so yeah it's definitely getting on my top 10 list just because it's very unique and original also making the top 10 is The Bone Witch by Rin Chupaco. I had seen this cover before and it is gorgeous, but like I had heard maybe not so nice things about it. I heard that it's boring or um, it doesn't get to the point, it's weird, it's like structured funny, and I was like, I don't know. And then I'm like, but it's so pretty. So <laughs> I read it and I was like, I don't know what these people are talking about. This is structured gorgeously. It's kind of interesting because it's a story uh, told in two time periods. So it's told in the present and in the past. It's all about this girl named Tia who is basically a bone witch, which is a kind of necromancer type of thing. And she fights demons to save the realm. Like, she's an awesome character. And it's all about... Um, she is basically in the present telling this story to a bard. And she's telling the story that happens in the past chapters, the chapters that are happening in the past. And in the present, Tia is very, very different than how she is in the past. So you're basically, you're seeing someone tell the story of how they became the villain. And it's so fascinating. I will admit it is slow. It is slow paced at times, but it's so good. It's like if Memoirs of a Geisha was a fantasy story with like necromancy. <laughs> That's actually like a good descriptive adjectives for this book. It's really good. I really enjoyed it. And it was a book I wasn't expecting to enjoy. I thought maybe I would like it or I would just agree with everyone else that it's boring and weird. But I was like, oh, it's not boring or weird at all. It's so good. And it's so fascinating seeing these little snippets of the present and like wondering how the changes occurred to turn Tia into this person who is unrecognizable from the person she is in the past. So it's very fascinating and I can't wait for the finale to come out next year. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It, it has an odd structure, I will say that, because it's present and past, but it's a good structure. It makes sense as the story goes along. It's really good. I really, I recommend. Stick with it, it is slow in the beginning, but it gets really good, so I recommend it. Next up, I have Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow. This is another witchy kind of book. It is also Asian-inspired, and it is a 
retelling of the Snow White story, but from the Evil Queen's perspective. So it's kind of an Evil Queen origin story, but set in a fictional ancient China. And it, it's, it's really good. <laughs> I know I just keep saying that of all these books. Obviously, this is the best books of the year video, but it's like stunningly beautiful. Again, it's another story about the villain. I was really into villains this year. A lot of these books I'm picking because the villains were really good. This is a year of villains. This is about Shifeng, who is a girl who is very ambitious. She's Slytherin AF. Obviously, there's a snake on the cover here. And she wants to be Empress. In order to become Empress, she has to do some very questionable things. And, um, you know, I'll just be honest, the bitch eats hearts. She rips hearts out of people and eats them and that gives her magical powers. So she does some bad things in the book, but she also struggles with her own like morality because she's doing these evil things and she realizes that they are evil, but she questions why she's doing them. She's like, does that mean I'm evil? What even is evil? Like lots of things. It's, it's, it's nuanced. It's an interesting character study. It also delves into morality and what is evil, what is ambition, where's the line where the two cross each other, and it's so stunningly visually beautiful. That's the visuals in this are amazing. Like, they're so good. And I really liked seeing this villain origin story because Yes, it is a story we have seen a lot, the Snow White story, the Evil Queen story, we've seen it, but this one in particular makes it feel very fresh, and it's unlike any of the other retellings I had seen or read, because it is Asian-inspired, and that adds like a different cultural aspect to it, and also adds a different setting, it's just, it's very fascinating. So I highly recommend if you want something fresh from a retelling standpoint. Also making the list is Reaper at the Gates, by Saba Tahir. This is book three of the Ember in the Ashes series, and I mean, I have like a million boners for the series in general, but this one in particular, I just keep thinking about certain scenes from this book every once in a while and how like, oh man, that was, that like hurt my heart, or like, oh, that was so badass. Like I just, there's these little snippets of the book I keep coming back to and I just think about them from time to time and how good they were. I think one of my all-time favorite literary characters is Helen Aquila. And this is Helen Aquila right here in the middle. And she is so interesting as a character because she has these two sides of her where she has to protect her family and she's very um, loyal. Like, you know what? I'm gonna say she's a Hufflepuff. That sounds odd because she's, 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 she's carrying a war hammer, she's an armor, she's a badass, but you know what? She's Hufflepuff because she's very loyal. That's her like defining character trait, I think. <laughs> Sorry. This is the hill I die on, she's a Hufflepuff. Helen is one of my all-time favorite characters of anything ever. So obviously anything that is Helen Aquila driven, I'm going to like, and Helen has some amazing parts of this story. So good, like she has had horrible things happen to her, but she has to keep enduring. And that is, that is some heavy emotional drama as well as um, you're like proud of her for enduring so much and keeping going. And she's like, I'm, there's no way to win this game unless I keep going. You know, if you're going through hell, keep going. That's the whole thing about it. And she's unstoppable. And I really appreciate that about her character. There's some certain scenes in this book where she was so cool. Like I can't get into them because you know, spoilers, but like, Oh my gosh, she has some, she has my favorite line of the book, but if I say what the quote is, it's a spoiler, so I can't say it. But that, that scene was incredible, and I loved it to bits. So definitely, it had to make my top 10 list just off of that scene. Also making my top 10 list is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. Jude is a very fascinating girl, and I liked her a lot. This is kind of one of the first um, fairy heavy books I got into. I don't really read a lot of books about fairies, but this one is like all about fairies. And I was like down, like I was so into it immediately. It is another um, kind of morally questionable character and she's very ambitious. Dude, this is a year of Slytherin characters. I was like really into Slytherins this year. I don't know what that says about me as a Ravenclaw, but then you know what? I'm the kind of Ravenclaw who gets along with Slytherins pretty well. Like, I get it. 
I get them. I don't want to date them, but like I get it. I love the character dynamics in this. Um, you have Jude, who is our heroine. She is a human living in fairy, so life isn't great for her. Then you have Cardin, who is a prince, and he is cruel, as the title suggests. And their relationship with each other is so toxic and fucked up, but you're just like, oh, I want you to be together anyway. <laughs> like, it's really weird to root for a really toxic relationship, but I just want to see them together. Because when they're together, they are so dynamic and fascinating. And I feel like they bring about their best worst selves, if that makes sense. Like, they bring about the best version of their worst self. That makes more sense. And I'm so into that dynamic. And it's weird and fucked up and toxic and I should not be into it, but I am. And I just, I just want to see more of it. I can't wait for the next book of this series. I'm freaking out about it. I still think about like scenes from this all the time. So amazing. Ugh. Also on the top 10 list is Wind Witch by Susan Dennard. This is actually the second book in the Witchland series. I liked it better than Truth Witch. So I'm going to say Wind Witch instead of Truth Witch. This whole series in general, it just holds a special place in my heart because I've actually made most of my booktube friends from reading this series. We all kind of ended up talking about it somehow on, on booktube and then we all kind of became friends and now we've been buddy reading lots of different books together because we wanted to read Truth Witch together. So, you know, sentimental value wise, it has like a special place in my heart. But also, Wind Witch is dope. It's so good. It's so fun. I enjoyed it. It's very interesting world building. There's different languages she created. Like Susan Denner like got into this like Tolkien level. Like she was, she got real into this world and I'm like, I dig her like enthusiasm. I'm just gonna be honest. One of the main reasons I liked Wind Witch so much was because I got a lot of Aedwin chapters and Aedwin, AKA hashtag Baedwin, is my jam. Like, I'm obsessed with this character, but considering there's a hashtag about him, I think a lot of people are obsessed with this character. He's awesome. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of good Aedwin chapters in this book, and he does some really cool stuff. There's also like a weird gore thing in this book, it's just an out of context spoiler, but Aedwin, he broke a guy's arm and then stabbed him in the neck with his own arm bone, which is like a piece of gore I have never read or seen before. So from that perspective, that's very original, if not very gross, but I'm like, I think about that scene often. I don't know what that says about me as a human, but I think about that arm bone in the next scene. <laughs> Just because it was so like horribly violent, but very visual and very interesting. And also it was Aedwin doing it. I don't know why I'm like obsessed with Aedwin. I'm not giving you a good example of why I'm obsessed with Aedwin, but whatever. Basically, Wind Witch took everything I liked out of Truth Witch and took it up a degree. Like the stakes are higher, the characters are in more peril. They're all coming to this conclusion that has been building, which is weird because I actually don't like the prophecy parts of this book as much as I like what's actually happening in the present plot of this book, you know what I mean? Um, the overarching storyline isn't as fascinating to me as what's going on in the present. It's rare that I say that, but this is what happens in this case for this book. But I'm really into Wind Witch. It was probably my favorite. I can't wait for Blood Witch. It's going to be awesome. My top pick for 2018 is Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. This was my favorite book. I read in 2018 and it's weird because I waited till December I found my favorite book in December <laughs> like oh it's so good it's so good like I have no words like I can't even describe the plot because unless you're reading the book the plot doesn't make sense it's hard to explain because it's kind of like a really artsy horror movie where you're watching it and you're like I know this is incredible and stunning and I know it's good but I have no idea what's happening <laughs> like that's how you feel sometimes in the book and you go with it because you know it's really good still like the prose is excellent is definitely feminist horror and I'm like down like I am so into it like into it to a weird degree of how into it I am <laughs> the the very basic stripped down gist of the story is that there's these three girls 
and they live on Salt Hill Rock, which might be sentient, and then they gain superpowers to defeat a monster who eats girls and is a personification of the patriarchy. <laughs> I realize that sentence doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's the best way I can make sense of the plot of this without spoilers that make no sense unless you're reading it. <laughs> so it's really weird to talk about my favorite book of the year but not be able to say anything about it because it doesn't make sense out of context and also it would be a spoiler if I did. So I highly recommend reading it. It is an artsy horror story and there's a lot of really incredible imagery with like moths and horses and girls and like how they relate to each other. There is um, also cool representation in this because one of the characters is asexual, the other two characters are lesbians, so it's queer, it's, it's feminist, it's horror, it's like, it's got a lot of things going for it that are incredible. I know some of you out there like aren't into horror and you don't like scary books, and this is a scary book, but it's more atmospheric scary, it's artsy scary rather than like boo scary. So there's not like ghosts and like demons and stuff. Well, there is a demon, but he's like the monster of this. It has, it's a monster, okay? There's a monster in it. But there's not like um, like ghosts and stuff in it. So it's not like a boo, shock you, scary book. It's more like thrilling, creepy, atmospheric horror. So if you could get into it, I highly recommend picking it up. It's incredible. Like... Like, I just want to, like, build a frame around it and just show it to everybody. <laughs> like, it's so good. It's my favorite book. My favorite book of 2018, Saw Kill Girls. Excellent. So after, like, reviewing my top 10 books, I have come to a few realizations. One, I was super into villain stories this year. Two, like, Slytherin characters. Characters who were, like, very ambitious and cunning. Like, I was, like, down for them this year. I was really into them. Um, overall dark storylines I was super into. And then also like really light fluffy rom-coms. <laughs> so though, like, you know, there's like a little weird bit that were, you know, one of these isn't like the other. <laughs> but I was really into villains and like Slytherin stuff this year. Which is odd. I'm a Ravenclaw. That has nothing to do with reading preferences, but like, I'm like, I just learned this right now, like what the theme was between all of the books I was like super into. Let me know in the comments down below, uh, have you read any of these books? If so, did you love them too? Uh, did I miss your favorite book of 2018? If I wasn't on the list, what was your favorite book of 2018? Put it in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you wanna see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon.